so what is the constructor when you create an object say you have the student class how you create an object for this class student s is equal to new student so use the new keyword to create an object when you create an object what happens memory gets allocated on the heap you all agree with this memory gets allocated on the heap for the student object now say let the student has two fields let's say student has registration number and name so you can store registration number here and you can store name field for the student here as and when you allocate memory what will be the initial values assigned in memory as and when you create the object how the object is getting initialized so that is the first question so when you create an object what happens internally that is what we are going to understand now let me tell you the use of a constructor a constructor is nothing but a method which is called to initialize an object when it is getting created you understood what is a constructor it is a method a constructor i'll write it here is a method and what what is the use of this method this method is automatically called while you are creating an object and what is the use of this method it will initialize the object with some values so that is the use of a constructor so i'll just go with this definition a constructor is a special method that is it is used to initialize a newly created object so there are two types of constructors we'll be seeing that too we can initialize an object with some default values or you can pass the desired values and initialize an object so we have some types of constructors we'll be looking at that and one important thing it is not mandatory for a coder to explicitly write a constructor a constructor is being created by default in java 2 so we'll take a look at the code for a constructor i have given some sample code here so this is my class students and i have some data members here what are the data members i have name registration number and marks so when i create an object say memory gets allocated on the heap and then what i can store there is i can store name i can store registration number i can store marks but what will be the initial values assigned to this so for this we have to write a method say here we are writing a constructor we are explicitly writing a constructor here so it is public students so there are some parameters i mean there are some rules when you write a constructor the constructor should have an access specifier public private or protected so here we mention the constructor specifier is public and it should not have any return type you should not give void int or it should not have any return type and then the name for the constructor the name for the constructor should match the class name so these are certain rules for a constructor the name for the constructor should match the class name there is no return type for a constructor and you specify what uh, access specifier it is that is whether it is public private or protected and within this i can mention the data members say registration number is equal to test i give some values name is equal to test marks zero so what happens when i uh, run this say when i execute the student s is equal to new students so this is students class s is equal to new students when i create this object this is getting created memory allocation happens immediately automatically this method will be called the constructor method will be called and what will happen the statements here will execute automatically this will happen when you execute this statement so what will happen registration number that is registration number everything will be test here so marks will be zero so when you create when you write this statement and execute this will occur that's because the constructor method is automatically invoked upon creation of an object is that clear so what is the use of a constructor it's a special method used for initializing an object that you are creating when it will initialize at the time of creation itself it will initialize so this is called a default constructor or you can call that to be a no argument constructor no argument constructor why it's a no argument constructor this method is not taking any input arguments so we'll say it's a no argument constructor so we'll take in uh, look at a demo for this constructor now we'll see how constructor is uh, being used uh, let me show you that demo uh, so let's uh, go with this demo what is the first step 
for creating a constructor we need a class right so we need class students will create and then in this class we we'll have two variables that is uh, string name and string registration number will have string name will have what next we'll have a public method here i call this method display student method and we'll just print registration number and name this dot registration number plus this dot name so what we have in this class very simple two data members and one method to print the data for the values now let's have a constructor here how will you code a constructor let me code a constructor so what is this constructor it is nothing but it has an access specifier let's say it's public the name for the constructor is the name of your class it's a method so give two parentheses and within this let's go with the initialization say i will initialize it like this this dot registration number should be test it's an int it's a string and this dot name should also be test upon creation of the object let me create the students object students yes is equal to new students and uh, now i will just call display student let's see what values are being displayed s yes dot display student so what it should display is test and test let's run this so you understood this right what is the use of a constructor now the next question i have is so okay i don't have this constructor let me delete this directly print the data in the uh, for the attributes what will be printed let me directly print the data in this uh, in these attributes what will be printed null is getting printed if you have an integer value what will be printed zero will be printed so there is something initializing these attributes even when you are not writing a constructor so what is that so i'll tell you there is something initializing this object even when you are not writing a constructor that constructor is created automatically and that is called the default constructor so default constructor initializes your attributes to some default values what are those values if it's an integer it will be zero if it is a string it will be initialized to null and even though you are not written that constructor that will be called internally and your object will be initialized with this default values but then as a programmer you want to initialize that with your own default values what you have to do you have to go with and you have to create a constructor here so how will you create a constructor once again it's void uh, it's not void students it's public students and then parenthesis here you can call this dot registration number is equal to some value whatever value you want to initialize this dot uh, name is equal to test so what happens if i create another object here students ram is equal to new students what will be the values initialized for ram dot name and ram dot registration number will it be the same so again i create an object and then i run this so what happens now you can see this is for s dot display and this is for ram dot display so what's happening here is say whenever you create an object of type students the constructor will run initialize the data members for that specific object using the values you give so this you call it as a default constructor some important considerations here do not have a return type for a constructor have the constructor as public you can also have it as private and protected that is in a different scenario we'll come to that later on i don't want you to be confused for now you can have it as public are you all clear with how to create constructors now there comes another concept see for every object this is getting initialized as test test 
Whereas I want to pass the values when I create the object and initialize it. I don't want it to be test by default. Then what we are going to have here is a parameterized constructor. We'll take a look at another constructor that is parameterized constructors. What is a parameterized constructor? While I'm creating the object, I want to pass the values and initialize it. So let me say I am passing for the first student, the registration number to be 111. And then the name for the student is say Satish, I'll just enter my name here. So Satish, I'll give. So these two values are getting passed to the constructor. But here you don't have the constructor receiving the values. So you should put some input arguments here. So you get, the, you get inputs of type string. I call this input name. And then another string comes. This is input registration number. I'm sorry. Input registration number. And this is string input name. So 111 will be mapped to registration number. Satish will be mapped to input name. And here what you're going to do, you're going to assign those values here. I reg number and here I can say input name. So now how the object initialization happens when I create the object these two values are automatically passed to the constructor and those values are passed to the object. So if you have a parameterized constructor it is mandatory that you enter the parameters. So you're getting an error here. Why are you getting an error here? While I'm creating this object it is trying to invoke this constructor but it needs two arguments. There is an argument mismatch in the method invocation. So for every object you create, you have to give some input parameters. Let me give 112 and uh, the name here is Ram. Now the error will be resolved. So here is this constructor. Now let's execute this code. What do you call this constructor to be? You call this constructor as parameterized because you're giving an input parameter. Let's run this. So what will be the output here? First displays 111 and Satish for this particular object. And for Ram's object, the values initialized were 112 for registration number and name as Ram. So whenever you create an object, you can give the arguments that are needed for your parameterized constructor. Say you will end up in a situation wherein for some objects I will initialize for some objects, let it be a default initialization. So in that case, say I want for some objects like this, say students, oh God, students, say Mohan is a student is equal to new students. For this, I want some default initialization. I don't want to pass the parameters and I call this Mohan dot display student. Now the problem is it, it should be searching for a default constructor, but here we don't have a default constructor. So what we can do is we can overload this constructor. We can perform method overloading here. What is method overloading? You can have the same name for different methods, but then they vary within by the type of arguments they take. So here what I have is public students. So this method I have inside this I will this dot registration number is equal to test and uh, this dot uh, name is equal to test. So constructor is overloaded. This is called constructor overloading. I have two different types of constructor. When I pass the parameters, this method will be called. When I'm not passing the parameters, this method will be called. So let's see whether we are getting the output for all these three constructors now. So this is for Satish, this is for Ram, and this is for Mohan. Wherein Mohan, we have invoked the default constructor and we have initialized the data. So you can have parameterized constructors and default constructors. Based on your type of invocation, the appropriate method will be called. There is one error that will arise when you are using constructors. I will tell you what that error is. Say in a parameterized constructor, I am just using string registration number and the string name. So this is coming as input and here instead of using this dot registration number what I will do is I will just use registration number. 
some students were call, asking me why should i specify this dot registration number why can't i just use registration number so if i just use registration number which is denoting the class data member this is equal to i am initializing it with the input registration number so i'll just give reg number if i perform something like this then your code is going to have an error why it is having an error it will lead to ambiguity that is it will not know what is this registration number is this from the class or this from the class which is from the class which is from the input so will you avoid this ambiguity you have to put this this refers to the object right and this so by using this what you understand here okay whatever that is coming in registration number is this one and this dot registration number refers to your class data member so are you all clear with how to use parameterized constructors constructors what is the difference between default and parameterized constructors